It's Monday, April 1st, 2024. An absolutely stunning day here in Palm Desert, California, about 85 degrees as I make this video, but I know you're not here for a weather report, so let's get right into what's happening. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Just got off the phone with a very, very good friend of mine uh, from the uh, Orange County, LA area. Uh, somebody I've known, uh, my friend Dave, we've uh, been friends for 25 years. Uh, he's in the trucking business, has his, his uh, own rig. His company is called DT Trucking. And he's been in the game for at least 30 years, maybe, maybe a little bit longer. And he was telling me today that he had to put his truck in the shop, had to be towed twice from one shop to the other. That was $350 for each tow. The repair, got to replace a computer plus labor, $8,000. He's spending five hundred dollars a month to park the rig. A thousand dollars. He told me his insurance went from five fifty a month to one thousand dollars a month to insure his rig. You're looking at five dollars and seventeen cents for a gallon of diesel here. A truck that gets seven miles per gallon. And let me tell you, diesel prices are going to be going up. Oil prices are going up now. They're going to continue to go up throughout the summer, and and you know hopefully. Uh, things de-escalate in the Middle East, or uh, we're going to be hearing about pipelines uh, and refineries uh, blowing up and prices are going to go much higher. And I hope that does not happen. But, you know, Dave is a hardworking blue collar guy, owns his own business. And, you know, talking to him today, I, I, I could tell he was, you know, really felt down, defeated, uh, from all of this and, and I look around and I see all these people getting all this help and here we have a small business owner who's been you know not looking for handouts not taking anything from the government just wants to work you know five six days a week pay his bills pay his insurance you know pay for the truck pay for his, his rent and he's not getting any help and you look at the trucking industry and, and this is one guy and how how long can people afford to be business owners or stay in trucking when repairs cost this much? And he's going to be out of business four, five, maybe six weeks waiting for this repair to be done. Yet we're helping all these other people, the newcomers, and we're sending billions of dollars all over the world. And people like David get no help. And how many people like David... Uh, ha have been just buried and put out of business. How many restaurant owners, how many small retailers, how many truckers had just been buried, never got any help? There's no incentive. There's no help for the small guy, the business owner here in America. My heart goes out to people uh, like this because without people like Dave, the backbone of America, the, the bloodline of America, uh, we don't have a country. And, you know, it, it really upsets me to think that we're not helping our own people. We're not helping small business owners. There's no incentive. There's, you know, nothing to turn to when you're on the verge of losing your business. But we can make, you know, uh, billions of dollars, print that up, send that all over the place. We can hand out $5,000 debit cards. We can feed everybody. We can, hey, if you can make it to California, you get free, free health insurance. It is a sad state of affairs, ladies and gentlemen. It is a sad state of affairs. And when you talk to people in your own circle, people you've known for 25 years going through the struggle now, you know, paycheck to paycheck now, eating up uh, that savings to, you know, get the truck repaired, get back out there and losing all this work week after week. Really, really sad. Hopefully, um, Dave and I will get together and do a video, hopefully in the next couple months. Next time I'm out in Orange County or the LA area, uh, we definitely got to get together. So uh, it, it is just, this is just one little example of the millions that, that this is happening to right now every day. California fast food workers are now making $20 an hour. It begins today, April 1st. If you're working in the fast food industry here in California, you are now making $20 an hour. But this career in fast food is going to be short-lived because these fast food restaurants are going to be laying off a lot of people and they've already started. They're not going to be able to continue to stay in business at $20 an hour. You're going to see uh, you're going to see McDonald's close. The, the, you know, these are franchise owners that own these 
these McDonald's and these fast food restaurants, they're not going to be able to do it. They're going to close or you're going to see AI come in and just replace all these jobs. And I think over the next couple of years, that's what's going to happen. Uh, AI is going to come in and they're going to replace a lot of these jobs. And, you know, I, you, you got to think how in the world did they come to the conclusion, let's just, you know, let's make it mandatory that these restaurants must pay $20 an hour for somebody to dump fries into some grease or make a hamburger. It's unbelievable. But where the real concern is now are the smaller mom and pop restaurants who are going to have to compete with these $20 an hour fast food jobs. They're not as big as McDonald's or Burger King or Taco Bell or Jack in the Box. They don't have the deep pockets. Um, the mom and poppers, how are they going to get people to work for them? Because if you don't pay them $20, they're going to go, hey, I can go to McDonald's. I can go to Del Taco. I can go to Jack in the Box and get $20. Why would I come work for you for 16 or 17? So the smaller restaurants are going to have to, to compete with this, and they're probably not going to be able to do this. And even the big restaurants, they're going to pay a price here too because they're going to lay off a lot of people. They're going to replace jobs with AI, or, or some of them are just going to shut down uh, their establishments. Wall Street Journal, Taco Bell and Pizza Hut are going AI first. Uh, Yum's new tech chief says, uh, right now millions of dollars is being spent on AI, they cannot wait to replace these jobs. You know, if you go to one of these restaurants, I try to stay away from them. But you know, as I've said, guilty, I do, I do hit some fast food restaurants from from time to time. But the service is typically bad. The restaurants are typically dirty. Uh, they get the order wrong a lot. Um, with AI, they don't care if you show up or not because AI will show up. A lot of these people take days off, they call in, they're not reliable, they don't like their job, they have the bad attitude, they get the orders wrong, as I just said. And with AI, it's gonna fix all that. Your order's gonna be right, you're not gonna get the bad attitude, the restaurant will be cleaner, it'll be more efficient. Unfortunately, that's how it's gonna go, and they're gonna save a lot of money. They cannot wait to end your career in fast food, it is coming. According right here to the Wall Street Journal, and you know what, it's probably gonna be cheaper. Obviously, it's going to be cheaper to, to use AI instead of pay, paying people $20 an hour. By the time AI is in, they'll be wanting $25 an hour, $30 an hour. Why, let's just pay them $50 an hour to make hamburgers. Why not? So that's the answer. So uh, I hope that everybody's happy with, it, with what they're getting because you have now cost a lot of businesses their, their the entire business. And you're now going to cost people their jobs because it's going to be game over in the uh, restaurant business. Oil prices rise amid reports Iranian consulate hit by missile strike in Damascus. Today, uh, earlier, um, I, I saw oil at 83.93. Not sure where it's at right now, but things are escalating uh, over there in the Middle East and prices are going up. And you can bet, as I said earlier in this video, if a pipeline gets hit, a refinery gets hit, all bets are off. You're going to see oil go to $100 a barrel. I, I think right now, with what I'm watching, we're starting to creep up to around 84. We're not far. We're not even in the summer yet. To think that we're not going to see $90 oil this summer, I, I think you're sadly mistaken. I think we will break $90 this summer. And if things really begin to to heat up over in the Middle East, uh, you're going to see oil break 100. The hedge today, multiple. Uh, Iranian generals reported uh, killed in is Israeli attack on Iranian embassy or Iranian embassy in Syria, uh, Tehran, or Tehran, vowing a harsh response to the Israeli attack. Um, this could really uh, be the start of an all-out regional war over there, and let's not rule out retaliation right here on U.S. soil. Uh, these people are, 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 have no uh, love for America, I will tell you that. And being friends with Israel, um, these may even have been American weapons, I have no idea. But, you know, I think we're getting very, very close or closer to seeing some sort of retaliation right here in America. And I hate to say that, that is, that is very concerning. And again, this is why I make these videos that we're all preparing, that we're getting in a mindset that, hey, your electricity can shut down. 
The lights can go out. The financial system could be shut down. You know, uh, Iran is very sophisticated with cyber attacks. And so we're, we're going to see something here, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to see something here. And so be prepared that you can't go to the bank. You can't use your plastic uh, cards. You can't use the ATM. Uh, businesses shut down because they just cannot process uh, purchases. They can't do business. So do you have enough food put away? Do you have enough water put away? Can you keep yourself and your family safe? Um, you know, when we talk security, we're talking real security. I know people out there like to copy the term, get your security, hope you have security. I, you know, I watch some of these channels and it's like, what, what, kind of, like, what kind of security are they talking about? You know the security I'm talking about. You better be proficient. You better have the tools and the training and the correct gear. Because if the lights go out, the financial systems go down, people get hungry in 72 hours. This country right here looks like something out of an apocalyptic movie. That is no joke, that is no exaggeration. Make sure you're ready. Uh, here's another one today. How it started and how it's going. Homes have become less affordable uh, since the president took office. This is on Fox Business. Annual earnings to afford a medium price home back in January of 2020 was $75,900. January 2024, it was $110,800 to afford a medium price home. That is up 46% in just four years. Who can do this? This is why homes are sitting on the market. Medium home price back in 2020, uh, January 2020 was 290,000, today 412,000. I looked at the 30 year uh, mortgage rate, um, bank rate today, 6.88%. The 10 year bond yield was up around 12.9, 13 basis points. Uh, really screaming today. So mortgage rates are not coming down anytime soon and they could go up. They could go up. What is going to happen to this real estate market? It is crashing. Uh, prices aren't, but sales are. So you can ask anything you want for a house, but are you going to get it? Can you sell it? I'm looking at houses four or five times a day and I'm beginning to memorize the addresses on these homes because they've been on the market so long. I saw a home last week on the market for 1,100 days. I, I saw a house today, 412 days on the market, 330 days, 180 days, 130 days. I mean, these things are getting really, really stale. Question is, how long can the sellers hang on? Younger generations open to turning to friends, family to achieve home ownership, also on Fox Business Today. Over half of Gen Z respondents who want to buy a home said that they would consider doing so with friends uh, or a friend group, maybe even some newcomers. Maybe, that, maybe that's what they'll, they'll do. They're doing it now, right? They'll pay you to rent out one of your bedrooms to some newcomers. And I know people hate when I use that, that word, but I'm, being, I'm just being sarcastic, so take it easy. Uh, I think it's funny, newcomers. So maybe this is how they'll get people to buy homes that, well, if you take on four newcomers in your home, you'll be able to make the mortgage payment and be a homeowner. Wouldn't that be great? Um, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, this is absolutely uh, pure insanity. Um, many said that they're looking to save money by cutting back on non-essentials. What are they cutting back on? They're cutting back on going out to dinner, out to lunch, dining out, and holding off on major purchases. This is not good for the economy, right? If people are out, out there going out to dinner and lunch and breakfast and buying bigger purchases, not good for the economy. Anybody out there, please explain to me today, how in the world are they going to be able to cut rates? And I will say this, every day, now that I'm watching some of these business channels, there are more and more people coming out saying, it ain't going to happen. Maybe one cut. Most saying no cuts. How can they justify cutting rates at this point? I don't see it happening. Um, what we did see today is gold prices hitting another all-time high, $2,270. I saw it up $31 today. I don't know where it's at right now. Um, but in this article, CNBC, gold prices hit another record high on Fed cut expectations. I think they've got this completely wrong. Gold is not up because it is expecting rate cuts because the rate cuts aren't coming and they haven't been coming. It's because gold sees danger ahead. Gold sees trouble ahead. And there is real 
concern and real concern uh, uh, about covering investments with tangible uh, gold as central banks uh, stockpile it at this point. Who's buying a majority of the gold right now? It's central banks because they know uh, that, 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 that real investments uh, are going to have to be covered. And what can they cover them with? Physical gold. Silver had a nice day too. It is holding above $25, so that is good to see. I would love to see silver break above $26. Um, this is also very interesting uh, from the hedge. Utah formally empowers state treasurer to protect state funds with gold and silver. Utah Governor Spencer Cox has signed legislation expli explicitly empowering the state treasurer to protect state funds with an allocation to physical gold and silver. House Bill 348 permits... permits but does not require the treasurer to hold up to 10% of certain state reserve accounts in physical gold and silver to secure state assets against the risk of inflation and financial turmoil. Uh, very interesting. And I think, um, I think that that's good for gold. And I think that we have got to be our own central banks. We've got to uh, be thinking like the state of Utah is doing right now. Think about if, if a state now is, is thinking about physical gold and silver, uh, if, if central banks are stockpiling this stuff, why don't you have some of this? I don't sit here and ever give financial advice, but I've always said you should have some gold, you should have some silver. And I say that with, with no problem because I know it can never be worth zero. It can go up, it can go down, but it can never go to zero. It is unlike a, a junior mining stock that a lot of these bozos out here have been trying to sell for years. And I have junior mining stocks, okay? And people have asked me, can you recommend, can you, can you recommend what stocks you're in? And I will never do that because they're too volatile. And I would feel horrible if somebody, you know, bought some junior mining stocks that I'm in and they went to zero because they can do that and they have done that. So I don't ever recommend this stuff. If you can afford to gamble a little bit, get yourself some, some junior mining stocks, do some due diligence. But there's bozos out here that sell this stuff daily and take no responsibility. And then um, a year later, the, the, the miner's gone and they never talk about it. So I will never give uh, financial advice like that because I know that that stuff can go to zero. I will tell you to own the physical gold and the physical silver because it can never go to zero. It is a 5,000 year history, a track record where it's never gone to zero. And I think it's going to go even higher. It can come down and it can go up a lot more. Uh, if you need a good place, SD Bullion, go to my link down below. I've been dealing with SD Bullion for six and a half years now. Many of you recommended them before I was even dealing with them. So if you need a legit, reputable place to buy your gold and silver, SD Bullion down below, check them out. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to end with this last article. It's absolutely, in my opinion, disgusting. Uh, newcomers given seven times more taxpayer-funded benefits than military families. How do you feel about this? Comment down below. I want to know your thoughts on this because this just absolutely irritated me reading this today. According to the Military Times, enlisted soldiers receive a guaranteed allowance of $452.56 a month. Deployed soldiers receive $399 dollars and 90 cents in monthly meal deductions despite not using base dining halls. The New York newcomers, a family of four is getting $1,440 per month. And of course, we hear all about these debit cards, 3,000 on these debit cards, 5,000 on these debit cards. You come to California, you get free health insurance, uh, Tyson Foods, you know, going to be hiring a lot of newcomers while they get rid of the 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 old uh, Americans, uh, so they can bring in newcomers. And so they'll work cheaper. Unbelievable. But when it comes to the military, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, is this absolutely a slap in the face to anybody in the military? I don't know why anybody at this point would even want to join the military. And God bless you if you're in the military. I respect you. Thank you so much for your service. Uh, I wish we were actually using our military the way it should be used, protecting this country right here. But if you're in the military, God bless you. I love you. Uh, all, all respect. But this is absolutely dis disgusting right here. Absolutely repulsive that we're paying newcomers more money to take care of their families than the people who protect this country. Um, unbelievable.
Unbelievable. We're in big trouble. We're in big trouble. I'm going to leave it there today. Um, like I said, it's a beautiful 85 degrees. We're breathing. We're talking. We're, we're opening up our minds. We're preparing. Uh, we're training. Did an hour of boxing today, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm hitting it hard all week. And I advise that, you, you know, you do it too. And I was talking to Coach uh, Lionel today, and I just said, you know, it's not a one-dimensional game. It's mental, it's physical, it's spiritual, it's financial. You know, if you're just, in, you know, physically in the best shape of your life, but financially, mentally, spiritually, you're broke, you're going to be in trouble. This is a multi-dimensional game now, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to be covering all bases. If you're, if you're one-dimensional, you're going to lose. You are going to lose. Get the debts paid off. Get in physical shape. Get in a mental mindset. Get that warrior mindset going and get right with God. And if you do that, you're going to be a force to be reckoned with. You're going to, you're going to survive. You're going to prosper. You're going to sleep well at night. You're going to be able to protect your families. You're going to have a good life. But we need everybody to be doing this because if we don't, we basically just have a country of zombies and this country will fall. This country will be in big trouble. Stay safe. God bless.